welcome back, y'all. This is actually part four of, of Marriage Monsters. Monsters. This week, we're going to be talking about how trying to change your spouse can actually hinder your relationship. Right? Because a lot of times when you get together uh, with your mate, your intentions are to make that person like you, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk to you guys today, like like Monique said, how that can hinder your, your relationship. relationship. Yep. So don't, don't get into that that game, I'm yep. telling you guys. So uh, we got to come. Go ahead. Well, let me go off. <laughs> if you guys don't know, <laughs> I'm Monique. Okay, awesome. And I'm Darius. <laughs> She learned her lesson from last video. Yep. We messed up. Um, so good job on that. Last mm -hmm. video, we didn't introduce ourselves until like the 16th minute, which was weird. But That's anyhow, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, like, like she said, I'm there. That she's Monique. Mm -hmm. And we want to kind of go straight into it and kind of give you guys some tidbits mm -hmm. on um, the dangers um, of, of trying to change that person into you. Uh, right. What it could actually do for your your marriage and yeah. on the negative side. So, uh, babe, what what you got so far, man? You, I know well, you I do have a, a couple things, you know, that I came up with for you guys. Um, you know, I think it's it's important for you to accept your partner uh, for who they are. You know, flaws and all, because nine times out of ten, if they if whoever they show you who they are or whatever, <laughs> uh, believe them. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, one, they may seem like one person, you know, while you're in the dating, you know, mode, what do they call it, courting, yeah. while, you're, while you're courting. But then, you know, once they change, once you get married, they may become, you know, someone kind of different. But that's okay because, you know, with life, life brings changes. Yeah. You know, you just accept them, you know, accept those changes that weren't there whenever y'all were courting, mm -hmm. okay? That means that they, they either uh, got worse than you expected or better than you expected right and, and i would like to, i would like to just jump in there uh -huh. i think i got better he, um, he did y'all uh, because she, she she just made a point about accepting for what they are and yeah. I, I agree you do want to accept and believe that person for who they are things like that but i was a hot hot mess hot when we mess. first met we met in 2006 and um, a lot of things, and I'm still growing. I'm still learning on different yep, things, but sure is. a lot of a, yeah, a lot of things that I did in the past. You uh, don't do now. I remember just the mindset, maturity. Yep. I was very immature, mm -hmm. um, and things like that. Didn't know a whole lot about, yep. or just in general, being a man. So, yep. but I, I, I don't want to interrupt you. No, but, no, uh, that was good. That was a very good interruption. Yeah, but that's one. Of, that's just I was thinking about it. So, anything else you want to do? No, you that? can carry on to yours. Okay, so what I what I got, I said here, there will always be things about your spouse or your mate or your significant other that you do not like. Always, okay. Um, I mean, that don't necessarily mean you don't love the person. Okay, right. there'll always be something about like, and I believe over time, the things you don't like. You will learn to love it. I don't yeah. know if that makes sense. Um, or you may not learn to love it, but you'll just learn to accept and deal with it. And eventually it's going to not even like basically exist to yeah. your <laughs> to your mind to where it wants to aggravate you. Yeah, well, well here's what I'll say about it. Let me elaborate a little bit. God, for, God forbid anything happens to my wife prematurely before we're like 150. Um, <laughs> and she's getting taken out of the world early and things like that. I would miss... The, the frustrate I would I would miss me being frustrated of the clothes being in the corner. I don't like it at all. <laughs> but I would miss it. I'd be like, man, I need I need Monique around. I would miss the the late night I'm watching a TV or maybe reading a book and she wanna get all in my neck. Man, I would miss those things. <laughs> Even though I don't like it now, I love I I feel like after a period of time mm -hmm. You'll learn to love though. If that makes sense. I don't he tried know. It, but uh, he tried it. I just slide that in there. And that wasn't even in my notes. But go ahead. Um but yeah, so that was something that I put down. But also, you gotta ask yourself, are you actually trying to change your mate or are you gonna challenge that person to get better? Okay. Mm -hmm. Like for example, another quick example is that uh okay, good one. We were talking about this last week. I use spoons for Peanut butter and butter and everything right. else. Let, let me explain it, okay? <laughs> okay? I do a better job at it. Mm -hmm. So, whenever we first um, moved in with each other, uh, I, I use, he used spoons. 
to spread his butter and peanut butter. I use knives. Well, I, I use a butter knife. Mm. And whenever he saw me doing that, he said, why are you being so TV? Yeah, weird. And I'm like, what do you mean? You do everything you see on TV, he says. And I'm <laughs> like, well, <laughs> my mom taught me uh, to use a butter knife to spread my butter. And I don't believe she had a TV whenever she was a little girl. Or her mom didn't have a TV whenever she was a little girl growing up, you know? So I'm like, and it's called a butter knife. So you can spread your butter and peanut butter. <laughs> but I didn't understand that. So here's my point. So she is challenging me. She, she's not trying to change me, but she is challenging me to be more... Sophisticated. Sophisticated. Not even sophisticated. Just more, I guess, homey. To a point where when we have kids, I can teach them... You, you don't go to a, 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 a exactly. You don't go to a hotel, Ritz Carlton, and say, "Hey, you got a spoon for what? Oh, I need to put some butter on my bread." You know what I'm saying? Like, as you, you so, and, and for, for me, it was more so like uh, I'm just trying to think of man. Anyhow, I'm trying to think of anything that I challenge you to to grow at rather than change you. Mm, uh, reading. Okay, yeah, reading. <laughs> when he hates to read, I, I don't I, like reading. Reading puts me to sleep. Uh, if I'm reading a book. I'll, I'll fall asleep reading it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I'm, I used to love read. Well, I still love reading, but I've been reading since I was a child. Right. I mean, I like reading. I don't know why. It just puts me in a different state of mind. It gets me thinking, imagining, and yeah. whatnot. But anyhow, so just because that person is challenging you, mm -hmm. uh, don't necessarily mean they're trying to change you, but also you need to sit back and analyze your own heart and motives as well. Like, am I actually mm -hmm. trying to change this person or am I challenging this person? Um, to, to be the best person or am I trying to change them for my own purpose, for my own benefit, so right. to speak. So, yeah, yeah, and you know, that goes to another one of my uh, my notes. Um, are you changing your spouse for the better or are you changing your spouse, partner, whatever, for the worse? You know, I feel like if you're trying to change them for your own selfish needs or wants, then that's the wrong way to go about it. That will that will cause conflict within your relationship. Yeah. That's not healthy. Gotcha. Um, so just make an effort, an honest effort. You want to um, try to change them for the better. You know, maybe do do like him and try to encourage them to read. You know, read books of um, growth, uh, something to help with y'all's marriage. You know, uh, just make sure that the change is help is helpful to you and to them. That's okay. good. That's real good. Yeah. So the change cannot only benefit you. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it only benefits you, there's mm -hmm. an issue. I heard this. I don't know who said it, but it was so powerful. The healthy sign of a relationship is reciprocity. Okay. If you have, um, okay, I'm giving Monique something. She's giving me something. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a healthy relationship rather than I need you to do this just for me mm -hmm. type of deal. Um, and I, so that was good, Monique. And yeah, then thank it you. kind of brings me to this this um, this a love letter in the Old Testament. You guys may have heard of it, saw it several times. But Samson and Delilah. Okay, so Samson and Delilah was not married uh, by any means, but it says in the Bible that he had fell in love with her, so to speak. Okay, he fell in love with her and things like that. But also looking at it's in the Book of Judges, by the way. I'm not going to read. The entire passage, but it judges chapter 16, 1 through 20. Um, so you guys get a chance to actually go check that out when y'all get a chance. But while I, as I was reading it, one of the things I was thinking about was motives, okay? Uh, motives is everything. Like Monique said, are you getting that person to change for you or are you getting that person to change for the both of you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of give you guys a quick um, little nugget that I got. As I was reading it, but I just looked at the definition of motive. It says here, a reason for doing something. Okay, one second. A reason for doing something, especially one that is hidden or not obvious. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, what is your motive for asking your spouse to take out the trash or to, to clean or to to get a better job or whatever? What is your motive? Is it benefiting both of you guys? Or is it only because maybe you're embarrassed because your your spouse is a trash man or a janitor or whatever? Yeah. Like, what, like, what's the actual motive behind that? Yeah. And um, it was something else I saw in the translation. The Latin mm -hmm. word, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, for motive is mover, and it's to move. <laughs> okay, is Latin word is mover, and it's to move. So the motive 
is to move someone in a what a, a negative or is in a positive way. Yeah. Okay, so ask yourself those the right questions. <laughs> Absolutely. So here's what I got from the word uh, Judges chapter 16. I'm just going to read a couple of things that I got. Um, Delilah, if y'all don't know the story, she actually sold uh, Samson out for some for some money. Uh, she sold him out because um, the Philistines wanted to capture him and do all kind of bad things <laughs> to him and whatnot. And she had told him, well, it was like, a, I think it was three times when she asked him, what was your strength? And he basically lied to her. He was playing with her, saying, well, it was this, it was that, whatever. Chapter 16, verse 15, she told him, she said, how can you say I love you uh, when your heart is not with me? Okay. So again, motives, intentions yeah. uh, to move. If your heart is not in the right way, you can't say you love someone if you try to get them to do something just for you. Right. Okay. So that's something that you definitely want to look at. Right. But uh, go further down on chapter 20. He ended up telling her a secret where his strength came from, mm -hmm. which if some of y'all don't know, the strength was in uh, his locks. His locks. Yeah, his hair. So she told him, and, and that's when the Philistines came in, okay. and they got him. They got my boy. They 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 they, they cut. It. Well, actually, his hair off. she cut his hair off. Yeah. Said about she cut his hair off, and he was too weak to move around. Yeah, he was too weak to fight them off and things like mm -hmm. that. So I just want to encourage you guys to say this: your differences in your relationship is the strength uh, in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you go out there and and, and kind of yield to someone that only want to change you for their their good, right. then then I guess you're weakening your, your relationship in a sense because now you tend to believe that that person mm -hmm. doesn't value who you already are. Yeah. Okay, so I, as I was reading, I'm like, man, that is so good uh, that Samson, basically he, he, gave, he gave in because of love, so to speak. He gave in and he was willing to give up his secret, change who he was, cut his hair, and all of a sudden... He, he ended up getting captured and they gouged his eyes out and all kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'll definitely recommend y'all go check it out in Judges um, chapter 16, 1 through 20. But also, also it says here, <laughs> she wanted to change him for her gain. Like Monique said, she only wanted him to give up his secret for her to get some, some money, some moolah, some dough or whatever. Mm -hmm. right? So, I know that was pretty long, but uh, yeah. what you got? <laughs> Peter, uh, what? First Peter 3, uh, 1 through 7, okay? And it reads, Husbands and wives, likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without uh, a word by the conduct, conduct of their wives. When they see your respectful and pure conduct, do not let your adorning be external. The braiding of hair and the putting of gold jewelry are the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which God's, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God uh, used to adorn themselves by submitting to their husbands as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you and you are her children, if you uh, do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Likewise, husbands, uh, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs uh, with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Uh, they said opposites attract, and mm -hmm. Monique and I were the total opposite when we met. We still are uh, very opposite of one another, although we have a lot of things in common, but we are, in a sense, opposite. Yeah. Opposite attract. Um, not understand, God made each and every one of us different on purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we were all with the same, and Monique and I were ex exactly the same. We like the same music. Uh, what was that I used to listen to? Chills running down my body. What song is that? That's by Fatty Coop. Never heard of that crew, uh, that group ever in my life That's before I P. met Diddy's Monique. Diddy's group. Never heard of them. the band. So Monique liked cartoons. She liked, uh, she used to like a lot of pop music and Very things childish. like that. So what I'm saying is that <laughs> if, if Monique was just like me, I wouldn't know anything about the outside of what's, what's in my 
um, preference, yeah. right? You know, because I like a lot of uh, exactly. <laughs> I like R and B. I like Christian music. I like hip hop. I like so right. I like things like that. So it's like okay, if I would have met a person just like me, like my style, like my clothes, like everything, but you even wouldn't the spoons, be able to grow from each other. Absolutely, just the spoons and the the, the, the butter knives. <laughs> That's a small thing, but I'm telling you, it's, it's so big at the same time. So God made you guys different. On purpose, and I heard it this morning. I immediately heard it, and I looked at Monique. She looked at we have me. We looked at each other at the yeah. same time, like. <laughs> yeah, so we, were, we go to church here in Lake Charles and Christian World. Yep. And Pastor Jared Snyder said this, and it was so loud. He said, "God has given you permission to do you. Mm-hmm. Um, God has He didn't say do you, but He said to be yourself. Mm-hmm. But God has given you permission to be yourself. Okay, do you? Don't let anybody change you. Uh, uh, Stephen Furtis mm-hmm. said this. Do you? Boo-boo. Do you, boo-boo. Yeah. Do you. <laughs> so that's, that's just my, my point. So, babe, I'm going to let you go ahead and check it out. Okay. Uh, so at the end of all this, just thrive to be more like Christ, okay? If if anything, you know, if any if you're trying to change in any way, trying to change your spouse in any kind of way, just at the end of the day, thrive to be more like Christ, okay? And uh, just to end it, <laughs> kind of, kind of a long, another long scripture, kind of. This comes from Ephesians, um, Ephesians 5, 22 through 29, okay? Wives, submit to your own husband as the Lord, as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should, should submit and everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wife. Love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present to the church himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or anything or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. I just wanted to end on that note. Mm, You know, it's just love your spouse as you love yourself, and everything will be all right. (laughs) That's great. That's great. And quick announcements, and then we'll be heading out. We'll be done for this month. Uh, I can say this is part this four. Is the end, my marriage Monst- marriage monsters, and I know we said Monique was kind of indifferent about how she felt about marriage monsters, and expressing a lot of, I guess, the bad part of marriages. But if yeah. I must say, this is my favorite series thus far. <laughs> I know she liked power couples better, but next month we are going to jump into marriage millennials. Marriage and Millennials, yep. and we have a special guest that's going to be with us next Friday. Yep. Uh, so you definitely don't want to miss that. See who that special guest yeah, is. Stay tuned. It's going to be someone that's going to bring a, some, a blessing to you guys for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, also, December 8th, okay, December 8th, we keep talking about this event here in Lake Charles. Uh, at the, uh, exactly, all of that she just said at the, uh, the library. And, um, we have the the uh, flyer out on the event pages on Claude Street mm-hmm. at the library. It's going to be from two thirty to four thirty. Yep. Potluck event. Come out uh, with your mate. Have some good time. Fellowship with us, like she said. Games, uh, music, uh, photography, all of that. And yep. if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Yes. Uh, subscribe. Tell a friend. Share this information with them if y'all feel that it's helpful. But again, thank you guys for watching. My name is Darius. I'm Monique. And we love you guys. Thank y'all.